Now that you got the foundation of the right hand, which is the thumb, and those three different alternating patterns, let's add in the fingers with that. Okay, so this is the some more on the boom chick patterns, and I'm going to use my index finger, middle finger, and ring finger. Okay, the other thing as I as I stretch my hand out here, I better mention these crazy long fingernails are there for a reason. Uh, I'm using acrylic fingernails, so it's my real nail, and there's acrylic on top of it. And this is really the, the thing I've always done. When I was 12 years old and started working with Buster B. Jones, one of the first things he had me do was get some fake fingernails on. And um, these techniques I'm going to show you will work the same way, really, whether you use fingernails, whether you just use your fingertips. Uh, I really like the tone it gives me. It's nice and balanced with a thumb pick. You can see I use a thumb pick. But these things are going to work, you know, whether you have a thumb pick or fingernails. So I thought I might mention that. So the first thing we're going to do is put the fingers here on the G string with the index finger, B string with the middle finger, and E string with the ring finger. Okay? And I usually think of these fingers as one, two, and three. Alright? So that's where they're going to stay for the first pattern here. And I've just got a G major chord with my left hand. Now these work for all kinds of chords, but it's good to start simple. So there's a G. And remember my thumb is going like this. Six, four, five, four. Now for now, I'm going to think of those notes being on every beat. So one, two, three, four. So the first pattern, this boom chick pattern you're going to try, really puts the pinches. Now, I call a pinch when you use your fingers and thumb together. It's kind of a pinching motion. right? We're going to do that on the second beat and the fourth beat. So really slowly, I'll count it out as I go. It's going to go like this. One, two, three, four. I'll do that again without talking so you can hear it. So if you pay attention there, the thumb was doing the same thing it did, right, as the very foundation. So you want to keep that consistent. So as you're practicing, whether it's in the mirror, uh, whether you're recording yourself, or just watching your right hand, make sure that that thumb is accurate. All right, so let's look at the same pattern where I'm pinching on beats two and four, but this time with a C major chord. So the thumb is going like this. So now adding the pinch in there on beats two and four. Okay, and finally we're going to look at adding the pinch when you've got a chord with the root on the fourth string. Now something interesting happens here. I'm going to move my fingers up a string. So before where we just were, we had the index on the G string, middle on the B string, and ring finger on the E. But we're actually going to move those up a string, like this. So the ring finger won't even be playing anymore. It's just going to be the index finger on the B string and the middle finger on the E string. Okay, so I've got a D major chord, and my thumb's doing this. Sick Ooh, excuse me, fourth string, third string, fifth string, third string. That's the pattern that's going to keep happening with the thumb. And now I'm going to add the fingers on beats two and four. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like using the same chords, same pattern, just in more of an actual progression with all the chords happening together. So I'm going to play the pattern twice for each chord and then switch to the next chord just using G, C, and D. Okay, so that's the idea of pinching on beats two and four. So the next thing you want to do that's just going to further enhance your thumb and finger independence is adding the pinches on different various beats. Okay, so for example, let's try kind of the opposite. Let's pinch on the first beat and the third beat. It sounds a lot easier than it is to do. So the thumb staying the same, remember that. The same rotation you've been working on with the thumb, that's going to be maintaining, okay? So now I'm going to pinch on the first and third beat. I'll do it really slow. Okay. 
So you could continue doing this for yourself. Try pinching on different beats. Maybe it's beats one and four or beats three and four. Whatever you can come up with is just going to further build up your right hand technique there. Let's take uh, the first pattern we looked at with the pinches on beats two and four and put it into a little bit more interesting progression. Uh, I'm going to do a C major seventh, like this way of playing it. All right, so the root's on the fifth string. Then an A minor seven. Root's also on the fifth string. Then a D minor seven. And then a G ninth chord, like played like this, where the root's on the sixth string. I'm mentioning to you where the root is, because remember that's important. That's where you're going to want to start the alternating bass, always on the root, on the first beat. Okay, so here's pinches on beats two and four in that same progression, and I'm going to play it twice through on each chord. This is a good time to mention the muting of the strings. I, I really like to use the muting like I talked about with the left hand, where I pick up the fingers just a little bit, if you can remember that, um, on these type of patterns with the boom chick type of thing happening, just to emphasize those beats two and four a little bit more. So, for example, when I pinch, I'm going to try to mute the strings a little bit. And when I play like the C major seventh, where I can't mute these top strings, whatever free finger I have just comes down and rests on the strings to mute it a little bit. So listen to the difference there. Instead of letting them sustain like I just did, I'm going to mute those strings a little bit after I play on beats two and four. <laughs> completely different sound there. So now I would take any progression you want and the simpler the better at first and try some of these boom chick patterns with that.